Jermaine Defoe's back. Epic. Uh. Yeah, about that. I had debated whether or not to do a video on this, but I felt I kind of owed it to you because it's a pretty big story and it's one that could affect Sunderland going forward. Um, before I forget, like, comment and subscribe if you wish to. Usual phrase there. Um, I'm trying to get to 4,000 subscribers. Um, how long that's going to take, I don't know. I've just barely hit 3.2k, which, by the way, thank you. Great support. Um, but anyway, Domain to four. Um, there's a mixture of uh, emotions here, and there's a number of factors to look at, um, but I'm going to try and keep this brief to not waste your time too much. I'm not going to read the statement now, because, you know, go and look at um, Jermaine Defoe on Twitter or whatever. There'll be plenty of pictures to surface on the internet about it, or plenty of stories, rather. But, um, essentially, Defoe, after returning, I think, was it, um, start of February, has basically retired from professional football. We knew the day was going to come when he was going to. Um, I'll get the Jermaine Defoe... I wouldn't say criticism, but my negative slightly emotions were to fall on the, situ on the situation. I felt, I feel that he could have seen till the end of the season now. I felt that, you know, what's another eight or nine weeks for him when he's come back? Um, I don't know what it is. I think he's just, we're left now basically with Stuart and Broadhead up front, both of whom I really rate, obviously. But Stuart's obviously away on the national call-up um, and Broadhead's injury record is questionable at the minute. So with the four... I don't know. I feel a little bit let down. But that's not meant to be an attack. Before everyone gets their <gasps> pitchforks out, um, I'm not saying that as an attack on Jermaine Defoe because he's still a legend with what he did off the on, on the pitch, obviously, in his first spell. Um, and obviously, and more importantly, what he did with Bradley Lowry elevated his status to legendary in my eyes. He's still my favourite player for some than ever. Um, bearing in mind, I've only been at the football for 11 years. <laughs> but um, still. Um, but what, what I will say is, his, his signing was definitely influenced to some degree, not as much as people think it was, I think, but to some degree, PR definitely influenced the signing. Um, it was to try and sell tickets. But at the same time, I felt that even with the lack of match fitness, when he could, I don't, when with the condition he keeps himself in, I don't think it would have took that long for him to get up to speed personally, um, but or an adequate enough match speed. But at the same time, I still felt he could have offered something personally. I felt he would have seen the season out, but that's wrong, isn't it? But nevertheless, um, I will say that what I've said is in um, ignore what I've said if there's something not right at home or with his mental health because uh, it's not my business to know that. But if there is something up behind the scenes and there's something bothering him off the pitch, then fair enough. More important than football. Christian Speakman and KLD. I mean, I don't think it's fair to totally blame Christian Speakman for this because I think KLD would have sanctioned the signing. You know, you know, quick Speakman answers to KLD. Come on. Um, but at the same time, you know what? It was just one that just, well, obviously... Didn't work, did it, ultimately. But there you have it. Can't do anything about it now. We've just got to get on to the end of the season. Seven huge games left. Um, I will see you tomorrow night at the time of recording. It's Thursday um, for the show with Thane, where we'll talk about this maybe in a bit more detail. And we're going to try and do the feature where we go through Sunderland's running and see what chance we have. So anyway, love you and leave you there. See you later and stay safe. Love you all.